This fly is the rubber leg stone and I'm starting off with a size 10 streamer hook and I'm going to make this fly heavier so I'm going to add some lead to it. So it's about 15 wraps of, of lead and I'm going to position it right in the center of the of the hook shank there and the thread that I'm going to use is a 70 and this is a fire orange I'm going to tie this uh, in a kind of a rust and olive color and the legs are going to be orange so I'm just doing it to coordinate so I'll start with my wraps in front of the lead and then I'm going to reach all the way back behind and catch it again this way when I advance my thread through, the lead's not going to go anywhere. It's got kind of a thread dam in the front and behind. Then I can break that off. Now I'm going to bring it down to uh, just short of the, uh, of the uh, barb of the hook there. And I'm going to take a strand of my rubber leg material and I'm going to use a very fine orange rubber leg. My philosophy on uh, on legs for this sort of stuff is the thinner you can go the better. I just feel like it has more movement uh, when it's when it's thin. So what I did there is I bent it around my thread and placed it on. Now I'm going to go right over top of that bend and start to situate the the tail section here on either side of the hook. I can just bring that up. Now when I measure this out, I want the tail to be about the length of the shank of the hook, and so I can just bend uh, this back over it and cut it off at the eye, and that way I know the length of my length of my uh, tail section there. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my legs before I start to wrap uh, any sh uh, chenille in. Uh, the chenille that I'm going to use is uh, a variegated, and this is again a rust and olive. So I'm going to take just a section of that off. And I'm going to clean off the tip, exposing the core so I have a good tie-in point there to just behind the, the lead. Then I can bring my thread all the way up, and like I said, I'm going to tie in my I'm going to tie my legs before I wrap the, the chenille up. And so if I think about the hook shank, I want to be about halfway before I start my, my first leg. And I'm going to tie this in on, on either side. So I can take that, double it over, and then wrap it back. I'm not going to get too worried about the length of them at this point. We can trim all those things as we go. Then I'm going to move up the body of my fly and then I'm going to tie in this next set. And really the only measure there, I just want to make sure I can get a wrap of the body material in between these sections of, of legs. So then I'll take my final And now that they're in, I can start to wrap my, I'm just going to trim all these up to an approximate length here. And now I can start to wrap my body material up through. And you're just going to have to weave your way through this. I'm going to hold all my legs back.
and then I'll get to my first set. I'm just going to move those in and out. I'll get to my second set. And then I can come up to the front and tie that off and then I can trim that <clears throat> and I'm going to take a couple of wraps back away from the eye because I'm going to tie in a set of antenna to these so I'll take my same rubber leg material here I'll bend it over the thread one more time. This time I want it to lay forward, so I'll bring those up. Tie those in, and then I'm going to put some wraps underneath so they stick up. Just create that thread ball there and then that'll s stand those right up. Trim those off for look. Make some wraps here. with my whip finisher, trim it off, I'll add some head cement, just a drop, to get everything in place, and I can come back through and Trim up my legs. Bring them just a little shorter. And you can now you can move those and situate those however you'd like. If you want to get real creative, you can put in an overhand knot to these legs and it'll give it'll give the legs almost a a little joint. I'd just recommend that you do that before you uh, before you tie them in, so make the overhand knot and then cut to length. And again, you can tie these in all sorts of different colors. If you don't have the variegated look and you want to add some different shades, you can use a Sharpie as well. And that will start to you can start to darken some of the areas there. But that's it. That's my rust and olive variegated rubber leg stone.